What's up YouTube? This is Mike with Price Problem. Look what we got. I'm going presentation style today. Uh, if this glare doesn't look good, I'll overlay some images here. So what you're about to watch is me taking some MCT oil while like in slight ketosis levels uh, two times in a row, two different days, and seeing how it increased my blood ketone levels using a Precision Extra blood ketone monitor. And so after we go through this whole presentation, I kind of want to see what happened and why it happened. Uh, after understanding why, it's actually not surprising at all. So if anyone was ever interested in this, then uh, you can watch this video and see for yourself how someone in ketosis can get benefits from taking MCT oil. So let's cut to the tape. Welcome to Price Plow. All right, it's 7 a.m. I'm fasted. Let's see where we are at. Glucose, blood, fasted blood sugar, 102, higher than I like, man. All right, ketone time. Damn, I'm fasted. Still at 0 0.5, I am not really progressing. What should we test today? Let's test out some MCT oil. I'm gonna do one tablespoon and see how it affects me. Um, and if we have to repeat it, we'll do it again tomorrow. A lot of keto dieters obviously supplement MCT oil as a healthy source of saturated fat. Question is, if I take this and wait 45 minutes, uh, will it spike blood sugar, but will it drop ketones? And hopefully the answer is absolutely not. But let's find out. So I have one tablespoon right here. And I have the legendary Nutri-Key. This is unflavored. This is nothing but pure uh, MCT oil. They do have flavors, but I'm not gonna, not gonna do that. Yeah. I'm gonna be back in 45 minutes. All right, 45 minutes later, let's see how the MCT oil hit me. 111. So a small spike, uh, you know, or within the range of error. Either way, I don't think it's anything worth uh, anyone fussing over what we need to see though is what happens to ketones and I want to be consistently at 0 0.5 0 0.6 not 0 0.4 whoa 0 0.8 is that even possible we're gonna have to retest this because things are either fluctuating around these test strips might not be super accurate or maybe MCT induces ketone release somehow all right I'll see you tomorrow because we're gonna have to do this one again Day two. All right, so MCT oil yesterday made my blood sugar go up just ever so slightly within a range of error and made my ketones, though, go up about 0.3 from 0.5 to 0.8. So let's find out what happens today. Was that just an anomaly or was it uh, something that we can consistently kind of predict? So fasted blood sugar, 105. I do not like my fasted blood sugar levels. Maybe there's a reason for that. Let's see where my ketones started. Fasted ketone levels. 0 0.6, okay. Making slow progress towards the 1.0 marker. So let's do a shot of MCT oil. <laughs> 1 tablespoon, you see it, same one as yesterday. Ooh. Tasted more flavor than I did yesterday. It's the same one. Got the natural one. Anyway, uh, at 7.19 a.m. right See where everything is at in 45 minutes. All right, let's get this over with because my stomach is feeling like terrible right now. Uh, I can see why Bruce Neller decided not to put MCT oil in Giant Keto. Uh, this is hitting me like a bag of bricks, but I did, I'm did. i avoiding going to the bathroom or any of that because I didn't want to mess up any of these scores. What am I doing now? All right, blood sugar. Last time we went up like eight points or something within like the margin of error. Ha! Went down. All right. That's all within within margin, though. That's the kind of number that's at least in a slightly normal range. Okay, so yesterday, moment of truth yesterday, MCT oil caused me to go... Up 0.3 from 0.5 to 0.8. Is it going to happen again? I started at 0.6. Place your wagers. Holy crap. All right. Well, there's something going on with these things. This is really interesting. What is MCT oil doing that's making me have more ketones in the blood? Because it's not an exogenous ketone. 
Unless this was spiked with ketones, which is not the case. Nutri-Key's the man, and they, uh, that would cost them a lot of money. So what is going on here? We, uh, I, I don't even know. I really haven't Googled this. I haven't asked anyone. I haven't seen if anyone else has done videos like this. But there's clearly something going on between MCT oil and my ketone levels. Uh, I think it's twice now, and that's like, these are non- insignificant numbers and I know it's like a home device and everything and we really don't know what the true accuracy of these are but uh, if we're going to trust them we're going to trust them and and they've gone up a lot so I'm gonna we're gonna have to do some research here I really wasn't expecting much to happen I thought this is just going to be kind of a bs video but it turns out that MCT oil if you can handle the stomach discomfort that some people get like I am right now may be very beneficial um, to getting your ketones up, especially if you need that pre-workout energy that people are using it for. So consider that, but it didn't make my blood sugar go anything out of normal. It went up a little bit one day, went down a little bit one day, all within the range. So this could actually be uh, the reason that keto dieters and low-carb dieters are enjoying such a thing. So next, we're going we're gonna to be trying a bunch of supplements along the way, but the next thing we're going to do is look at some research, and we're also going to have to test out coconut oil straight up and see if the same thing happens or what happens there. All right, this is Mike with Price Well. Subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be doing this, and we'll have some fun with it. And uh, that's it for now. Check out our Keto Supplement Experiment Series because i got a lot more coming on that. Thanks. Okay, so now that you've seen it, let's talk about why I should not have been surprised given the diet that I'm on and uh, what happened there. And so the first thing we need to do is uh, realize we are using the Abbott brand uh, blood ketone test strips here and putting them into the precision extra like you saw. And so the first thing is like, what, what were we really measuring there? And so looking at the, uh, the PDF for this, actually, Abbott goes on and says, these test strips are intended to quantitatively measure beta hydroxybutyrate in the blood. And so we're gonna, we'll see in the next slide, there's three different types of ketones or ketone bodies, but it's really the BHB, which is uh, incidentally the same exact thing that we supplement in some of these BHB supplements, not in the MCT oil, but that's exactly what we're measuring here. And so, uh, yeah, there's three main types of ketone bodies. We have acetone, acetoacetate, and of course, BHB, beta hydroxybutyrate. Now, technically it's not a ketone, but in the case of like keto dieters, we do call it a ketone body. It gets used and utilized by the, uh, by the brain for energy, especially when we are glucose depleted, like uh, I am right now, or um, if you're in like an emergency situation such as starvation or even a heart attack, your heart uh, is, is rumored that it uses ketones as well. And so uh, when we're in these certain situations and we put ourselves in these certain situations, our bodies adapt and they transfer, they, they transfer to this new mode of using different forms of energy. If sugar is not available, uh, it, you're not dead just yet unless you have a life-altering disease. And so um, what, what, were we, what was I taking with the medium chain triglycerides, MCT oil, medium chain triglyceride oil? And so the medium chain fatty acids contain, technically speaking, between 6 and 12 carbon atoms. And so you have these four acids right here, but the one of exception, and this is, this is important to note, is that lauric acid is kind of really a long chain, except for the fact that it technically does count as MCT, but it is longer and it does take a little bit longer to break down. And um, many people think that it's, it's kind of a detriment to the MCT oils out there. And that's a whole other story for another experiment maybe later on. Uh, but it's important to note though, that about 50% of coconut oil does have this lauric acid. And either way, you just saw, uh, you just saw that my ketone levels did go up with MCT oil, which primarily does consist of a lot of that lauric acid. Anyway, point being, these are, uh, this, is the, this is the size range of our MCTs, or our medium chain fatty acids. And so, uh, quick background, MCTs are definitely different as, as most people know. Uh, they're quickly and easily processed. They can cross the mitochondrial barrier without needing L-carnitine or carnitine. And so that's, uh, that's unlike the longer chains out there. And so that's a good thing for anyone who's carnitine and deficient especially. But also, um, with the exception of the lauric acid, they don't require bile from the liver uh, or lipase. And so there's less needed to get them into the actual, um, into the mitochondria where they can get to work. So it's a faster acting kind of, kind of fatty acid chain. And what's interesting about it though, is that scientists have noted that it's actually 8.3 calories per gram of it, rather than the nine point, or rather than the nine that you get out of most fats. And so uh, some people say it kind of behaves like a carbohydrate and it's, it's really because of the process that we're gonna discuss 
um, right now. And so a lot of you may have seen this picture, you know, around the web and everything. And so you're taking in, and then we're talking right now, we're in my liver right now. So we are in the mitochondria, in the liver, the MCTs get converted into uh, medium chain fatty acids, and they get pulled right in to the, this is the mitochondria without needing any of the carnitine. That's cool. And then it gets converted to this acetyl coenzyme A and then into ketone bodies. Well, okay, that's the basic explanation. And if that's good enough for you, then you can hit the stop button right now because that's what happens and that's what I measured. That wasn't really good enough for me because I kind of wanted to see what was involved. And so it does go a lot deeper than this. And so first off, um, we need to understand acetyl coenzyme A a little bit. And so this, uh, there's a really good video that shows where it comes from. And it really comes from beta, that beta oxidation of fatty acids. You have these long fatty acid chains uh, like, you know, the C, C12 chain and everything, and it gets chopped up and chopped up. And once, and uh, it's called cleaved. And when it's, when they're chopped up and chopped up, you end up with a whole lot of these acetyl COA or acetyl coenzyme A uh, molecules that are, that are sitting around in that mitochondria getting ready to get their next job on. And typically that's going to be for the Krebs cycle, but not always, as is the case for keto dieters or someone like in that emergency starvation or heart attack mode, there's other, there's another pathway that it can take. And that's what you saw happen with me for the most part. Also, yeah, so it's, it's involved in all kinds of different molecular reactions, but the, the whole thing is like the acetyl coenzyme A molecule, which is a very long molecule. I'm going to pause right now. All right, I just unpaused because I added this image. This is the entire acetyl coenzyme A molecule. And the and the whole, a lot of the job of this molecule is to get this little guy, this acetyl group, which has some hydrogen and oxygen um, into your body. And so this whole enzyme here is this long thing that attaches the fatty acids. When you see a, when you see a COA attached to a fatty acid, you might think, oh, it's just like a couple atoms. No, it's actually a very long, high molecular weight thing. But a lot of the purpose or a lot of what we're using it for in this case is just, we need that little blue guy. <laughs> and so I think that's kind of funny. Anyway, you have this long, you have this long uh, molecule here that's used for all kinds of, of metabolic reactions. But the main thing we need is that acetyl group right there. And so after we've, after we've oxidized all the fatty acids that we've eaten, we have, and it's all cleaved off, we have a bunch of these acetyl CoA's sitting around. And so now there's two different pathways that we can take. One is the Krebs cycle, and we're not talking about that here. But there's another pathway that can be taken, and that's the one that gets you towards the ketones. If I am carb depleted, there's a good chance, or having some sort of crisis, there's a good chance I need ketone bodies. So, so yeah, typically for the regular person, you're going to when you take the fatty acids, a lot of the acetyl coenzyme A is going to get used for the Krebs cycle. In my case, you're going to see that something different happened, in that we had ketogenesis, and so. That whole process is really with the details that I wanted to see. Why was MCT oil increasing my blood ketone bodies? That was, that was basically it. And so because of the beta oxidation of the fatty acids, I got a ton of this acetyl uh, coenzyme A hanging around. So you got these long chains. This is the, uh, you know, remember, this is the, the coenzyme A is actually a very large molecule, but this is the acetyl CoA. And so you have two acetyl coenzyme A's that combine. And then they use the thiolase enzyme to make that happen. And what you're left with is one acetyl, acetoacetyl coenzyme A. And you've also, at that point, you also lose a, a coenzyme A right here. I'm not sure what happens with that. I'm sure it attaches to something else uh, somewhere down the line, but yeah, I didn't really research where that goes. And so what we have now is we took two acetyl coenzyme A's. We have one acetoacetyl coenzyme A. Okay, so we got our acetoacetyl coenzyme A molecule now, and using a, another enzyme, the HM, HMG COA synthase, what we do is we add another acetyl coenzyme A. So this is our third one right now, and then that makes us beta hydroxy beta methyl glutaryl coenzyme A. And as you can kind of imagine now, beta hydroxy, now we're getting towards that beta hydroxy butyrate, which is what we're measuring. So this is kind of the mechanism that's getting us towards our ketone bodies, but it takes three of those uh, acetyl coenzyme A's to make that happen. So you need a lot of that fatty acid chain breakdown in order to make that happen. And so now we have our beta hydroxy beta methyl glutarol coenzyme A. We need one more enzyme 
And then what we're left with, we lose a little bit of acetyl coenzyme A at that point. And then what we're left with is acetoacetate. And this is uh, an image taken from Wikipedia. And it's actually, uh, this is one of our main ketones, but it's not the one we're actually measuring because this gets further broken down into acetone, which uh, breaks down really quickly, but the majority of it actually ends up as BHB, beta hydroxybutyrate. And that is why you me I just measured a lot of BHB in my blood after taking MCT oil. It's really, that reaction is what my body went through. And so um, if you really want good details, of, like if, if you're in college, I'm probably like saying all this stuff wrong and everything. I'm, I'm obviously learning this and I find it very interesting because my whole life I've been in one mode for the most of my life, been in one mode of metabolism and you're, you're switching your body. And I think it's important to understand why certain things are happening. Why did that work? Why, why am I, why do I have energy if I have no glucose or very low glucose in me and everything? And so, um, anyway, I'm interested, I'm learning, but the point is if you really want to see a great video about it, uh, I'll make links to this guy where he's got explainers showing all this. And he also has the really good explainer on the beta oxidation of the fatty acids as well. It's a whole series of videos that you can watch. And then there's also uh, some, some free texts that, that have this as well. Now, uh, for me, I think this is a fascinating thing because it shows a lot, it shows a lot of great things. And so I'm going to say that for rant in my next video. But at the end of the day, this is why MCT oil is good for getting you some energy into your blood and into your brain and everything if you're low, if you're low on glucose. Um, now, a good question would have been, what if I would have taken MCT oil and I had already like 150 carbs in me? Would any of these ketone bodies been generated? I don't think so, at least not as much, because I think a lot of that, um, a lot of the fatty acid breakdown would have gone towards other jobs. I really, my brain probably wasn't requesting that many uh, ketones. It's got the easy access to glucose there. And so, um, and so this is just me postulating, but I'm thinking most likely the increase in blood ketones wouldn't have happened or would have been a lot less if, uh, if it did. I don't feel like experimenting with that because I don't feel like taking a ton of carbs and knocking myself out of ketosis. Um, anyway, and so, and so the next thing is uh, if you are – now, what might this be a useful thing for someone who's an athlete after a certain point of time in their workout? And I think the answer could be yes. For instance, let's say you, uh, you deplete your glycogen stores and you're running out of glucose, uh, let's say 75, 90 minutes into a really long workout. Again, just like the BHB supplements, which is probably the straighter, easier way of taking this, could some cheap MCT oil or even coconut oil get you some energy later on in your exercise? Uh, I think yes, but at the same time, realize your brain and your, uh, your brain, your body is going to prefer that easy access glucose. I mean, there's no doubt that, that carbohydrates are an athletic performance enhancer. And I don't think that no matter how many of these BHB supplements and MCT oils and everything you take, at the end of the day, if you take carbohydrates, I think you're better off. But for certain people, this style of uh, metabolism seems to work better. And that kind of leads me into my next rant, which is for the next video. So please subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this. Uh, I, I kind of like learning this. Obviously, I, I haven't dug too deep into the details, but I wanted to know how this stuff works. If you are interested or you want to compare prices, you can use pricelot.com slash MCT oil and check it out. And, uh, you know, if you have questions, you can probably ask the guy who made this video, but uh, I'm happy to answer anything or do more tests because I think that's the whole fun of it is uh, obviously the blood tests are, they're better than the urine tests. The urine test, by the way, they check for this stuff. Um, but the thing is that over the course of time, when you, uh, once you become very keto adapted, you're not going to have a whole lot of that around. And also, uh, and so there's also just studies showing that, that the urine tests don't work as well. And so I wanted to go straight to the source and do the blood work. These things are not cheap though. We're talking about like two bucks a pop. Some of these videos have cost me like $30 or they're just test strips, which is fine. I'm happy to do these experiments because I think it's kind of fun and you're kind of learning what affects my body. Uh, but you have to realize that, you know, your body and your genetics may be a little bit different than mine. And so what happens in the series may not necessarily be what happens for you. But it gives you a nice little roadmap if you're, you know, someone who's kind of similar to me, maybe that you become keto adapted and you do better with low carb diets. Hey, you know, certain things might work. And in this case, MCT oil did give me that extra kick of energy. And now I understand why. And I think it's really cool. And so that's it. Mike with Price.com. Check out the next video because I'm going to roll right into it right now.